and he denied bias all day long, grilled there on Capitol Hill for hours by a joint House committee. Let's just take it around the table. That was a marathon today, Greg. Very contentious. I felt like I was unemployed on the sofa watching eight non back to back episodes of Jerry Springer. <laughs> that was that was like Parliament without the wigs. And it, and it, it, or the it, humor. It's either a new low or a new high. I don't know what it is, but I call it a clown show. But clowns are sexier. This is this whole event reveals how little wisdom there is in this world. There's so much noise, so little wisdom. Those are all smart people. They're not dumb people. But the environment, the politics, and the spotlight turns everybody into idiots. And I say all of them. So, I don't just say Strzok. By the way, Strzok, we're never going to get to the truth because he has 30 lawyers there. 30 Democrat senators are, con are there who are white knighting. Every time you want to get to the truth, they jump in front of him to take the bullet. And it's like, they're not helping him. Nobody's helping him. His smirk drives me crazy. I just want to pull my hair out and scream and get wasted. I think yeah. he just described how pretty much everyone watching feels. Oh, it's just, it was. You have your finger on the pulse of America. I right? have the finger on the pulse of something. something. Yeah, and for someone that has a nice smirk, his smirk definitely bothered me as well. <laughs> Dana, um, you do. You, you're, you're smirk brothers. Dana, um, I know you've been glued to the TV all Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Do you sure. think? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the members of Congress uh, on the Republican side landed any solid blows today on Peter Strzok that kind of um, shed light on any of his activities with regard to the Trump-Russia investigation? Here's what I know. I am sure if you ask the Republicans, did you land any blows on him, they will say absolutely yes, and they'll give you a lot of reasons. That the Democrats would say, absolutely not, and they'll give you all of their reasons, and the polarization continues. Uh, I did think it was quite odd that you had the one congressman on the Democratic side said that he wanted to give Peter Strzok a purple heart. Wow. Which is outrageous. That is, um, that's disgusting, actually, to, to suggest, given what the purple heart is actually for. Mm -hmm. um, then you had Democrats applauding. Part of the uh, yeah. testimony that Peter Strzok gave, like that's wholly inappropriate. And I thought there were several Republicans, including Louis Gohmert, I will say, <laughs> that went way overboard. It felt like a public lynching. Wow. And I thought it was terrible. You yeah. should get a purple nerve. I mean, you know what they should do in these hearings? And I know we're in television, so maybe we don't want to say this. They should not be on camera. They should be on the record. There could be reporters there. As, it wouldn't be that wouldn't be in public. But as soon as you bring cameras into this situation, you have all of this grandstanding. Well, Waters World would definitely take it live. It, no, it, turns, this, it turns this into a cable news show. Yeah. I mean, nothing right. against cable news Dana, shows. Dana, Dana brought up a point about, you know, the, the Democrats consistently and constantly throughout the day attacked and interrupted and made a spectacle whenever a Republican was getting close to something, they would get out of order. I, let's just look at some of the contentious back and forth that happened during the hearing. Point of order. The, the, the witness will answer the question. And I have you can't already just repress it, Mr. Chairman, because you don't. Question, on that ruling. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Attorney-client privilege, Mr. and he has been Strzok. advised not Mr. to answer the, the question. The gentleman will suspend. Parliamentary inquiry, what rules are we following that would dictate such an answer by you, Mr. Chairman? We are following the rules of the committee. Could you cite the rule? No. The, the gentleman Democratic from South members Carolina have a right recognized. to know what the rules are in governing this hearing. Agent, the gentlemen, can you share with us the these rules is not that you're order. making up as you gentlemen, go along? It, it's going to be tough for me to get through it if I keep getting interrupted. Now, Juan Williams, you've seen this uh, for decades on Capitol Hill. Is there a strategy behind people interrupting and causing this type of chaos during a hearing in order to <laughs> deflect? Or are these, are these people just can't control themselves emotionally. I think the latter is true. I think this is grandstanding. Someone just said that to me. This has been a day-long grandstanding. I like what Greg said about Jerry Springer. So it's not cable news. It's, it's <laughs> afternoon television, yes. right? Right. And it's at its worst. But there's no hair pulling because you have Louis Gohmert. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. What's the guy? Then the guy who would stand or the big guy and he would prevent the fight. Yes, yeah, 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 the bouncer. So, but they don't have that. They need that. But I will say, uh, contrary to what you guys think, I thought struck. Uh, explain some things, and don't forget, by the way, Dana, that you have Democrats who want to release 
the testimony that he gave earlier in yeah. closed door hearings, and they and and so far the Republicans have said we don't want that released. I'm not clear exactly why. I don't think. I don't it know either. Like at this point, just let let it all out. Yeah, let it go. But I do think that when Strzok said some things that to me were news. I mean, he said when he is talking in what appeared to be, I think, to a Democrat or a Republican about we are going to stop Trump. And I thought, you know, that's not good for an FBI agent to say. I understand, therefore, why Mueller and the FBI would let this guy go. He comes back and says he's really upset about the way Trump had treated, uh, I think it's Kamir Khan. Gold Star family. The Gold Star yeah. family. And he's saying he thought Americans, we as Americans, wouldn't allow that. I mean, he oh, could have talked about John Juan. McCain. No, no, I'm just telling you what the man said. And it struck <laughs> me. The second thing that struck well, me can was. We, can we, before you get to the second oh, thing, can sure. we play stop. some of that sound? We sure. have what Juan was mentioning about the stop Trump text. Let's hear it. I want to know what it meant, Agent Strzok. It would be his candidacy for the presidency. See, it wasn't that tough. And my sense that the American it's, yeah, population it's not that would not vote him into office. Right, right. Well, we hadn't gotten to the will yet. Well, I'm your, trying to, I'm your, trying your to cut through the chase and explain the, the text. The I, will I is it. the American people. Is that right? That's your testimony. The will stop it. You were speaking on behalf of the American people. Is that correct? Mr. Gowdy, what my testimony is and what I said during extensive asking of this question during my prior interview is I don't recall writing that text. What Are you I denying you, writing the text? What I can tell you is that text in no way suggested that I or the FBI would take any action to influence the candidacy a of Agent Candidate Strzok, Trump. That, that is a stuff? fantastic answer to a question nobody asked. Do you believe that? No, I don't remember that. No, I don't believe. First of all, you obviously remember it. And secondly, will stop it means that there's intent to do something to stop it. That's not just him having an opinion. That's not just him having a bias, which he obviously has, which, by the way, Trey Gowdy did an excellent job of laying out. He lays out the history of bias of all the comments that this guy made about not only President Trump, but Trump voters, about how he was all, you know, glorifying Hillary Clinton and saying that she should win the election before he even interviewed her. So there's this whole history of bias. Then you have this text. It's outrageous. I mean, this is what people say when they say that people in politics think that the American people are a bunch of morons in order to buy this because there's no way that you could believe. Not only that, Trey Gowdy also lays out at another point that he was thinking that Trump may in fact be able to win the election or, or may not. You know, it's just ridiculous. Honestly. Well, here's, here's the second thing I wanted to say about yeah. Strzok. Strzok makes the case that if he really was trying to stop Donald Trump, he would have leaked the fact of the investigation into Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. See, here's where I disagree with that, because I don't think they would ever leak that they were investigating Trump without any evidence. Because remember, at that point, exactly. there was no evidence of collusion. We still have not seen any evidence of collusion. And Trump was running on a, the system is rigged against me, OK? And I don't think Obama would ever allow or whatever, like anybody leaking that uh, they're investigating Donald Trump. Remember, that was his answer for why we didn't do anything about Russia and why we didn't Obama. do anything. No, during the we're 2016, during 2016, about, Juan, in the fall, Strzok, President Jesse. Obama is on record as saying we Jesse, didn't want to say anything because we Jesse. didn't want it to look like we were rigging the election against one candidate. Jesse, you're right, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this guy, this FBI agent, this former Army Ranger, this veteran. Okay, well, if you think he's linking he without says, Comey's approval, you're no, crazy. Me, no, let I'm me not. Let up. me tell you, I'm a, I'm a journalist. I know who leaks. Guys like him leak, and he didn't leak it. Well, okay. Let me ask you this. Oh, it was already out, Juan. The dossier was out. Harry Reid hadn't been oh briefed on gosh. it by Brennan. To say that this I mean, wasn't out there, it was out can there. Can I add just something about I, I find it interesting when you can't recall a text, but you can explain the context yeah. of a text that you don't recall sending. So I don't remember doing it, but I remember what I meant. <laughs> However, the thing is, he wins this argument because... With a text exchange, it's open to interpretation. Yeah. I believe there's something nefarious. When he said, we'll stop it, he was talking about him, the insider. But I, that doesn't matter what I think because there are competing, there are competing alternatives. And it's hard to prove. And it's hard to because prove. Because he can't answer any questions. Every time they ask him, when did you learn about yeah. the dossier was funded by Hillary? The FBI says, I can't say anything. Wh you know, where did you get the dossier from? The FBI says, I can't say anything. So I don't know if we're actually getting anywhere where he can yeah. prove I, that his bias didn't affect what is his this? decision. Is this, this is some kind of bias. star chamber proceeding? All, this is what we're really after here. The heart <laughs> and soul of it is Asian struck 
were you biased against Donald Trump during this campaign, and did you conduct your investigation in such a way as to hamper the Trump campaign and potentially aid the Clinton campaign? Well, well he answered We that. have sound of it, and then I'm going to have Dana react. Let's listen to what he said about whether bias affected his decision making. Let me be clear, unequivocally and under oath, not once in my 26 years of defending our nation did my personal opinions impact any official action I took. The fact is, after months of investigations, there's simply no evidence of bias in my professional actions. This investigation is not politically motivated. After. It is not a witch hunt. It is not a hoax. It's an impossible definition to say people must not have political opinion. Everyone does. Of course they do. The test is whether or not that is left behind when you're doing your job. Mm. Okay, here's an analogy, Dana. This okay. is like a left-wing journalist <laughs> who's been writing anti-Trump hit pieces for decades and has been investigating Trump, and it's very, very viciously anti-Trump. And then when you ask him, you know, has your bias ever affected your, your writing and your journalism? No, I keep my personal opinions totally separate. Isn't that the same thing? Well, I think journalists do try to do that. And I oh, think, you know, try. I put myself, sure. I would put myself in that category, right? So yesterday, for example, I interviewed uh, Brian Fallon from Demand Justice. He was, had been this press secretary for Hillary Clinton. Everyone knows that I was the press secretary to President Bush. Can I, at 2 o'clock during that show, set aside my personal experiences or leanings as I interview him? I could say I could try, but it probably comes through. And so I think there are ver this varies by degrees. Right. I think a better example might be a doctor, right? Um, so I'm going to throw. No, I think my example was much better. <laughs> I think uh, no, I mean, no, but you know what I mean about the doctor, right? So like, like you. So let's say that there's some like anti-Trump doctor and. Um, somebody I, on the Trump team is yeah. having a heart attack. No, no, I'll tell you the Does story. the doctor walk away and yeah. pretend he doesn't see it, or does he take care well, of yeah, it? Well, the the doctor, when there? the doctor resuscitates Hillary, no, and no. Then, he, then, he, then he pulls the plug on Trump, so here, <laughs> that's when you know the bias This is be real life it. humor that speaks to your point. Ronald Reagan is shot, yeah. taken to the hospital, oh, and, Ron, and Ronald Reagan looks up at the doctors as they're about to operate and says, I hope some of you guys are Republicans. Right. Now, that's pretty yeah. good. You know why I said that? Because they'd be better doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, America. Yeah, because they'd rip your heart out. <laughs> 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 you know, he doesn't have a heart. Remember, he's I am a heartless. Heart. Heart. But we should step back. We look at the Mueller investigation. We look at these uh, collu the collusion emails, Hillary relitigating the election. We have all these confrontations. We have politicians and celebrities you know, t t attacking Trump. Trump, this and that. At some point, we're going to have to get over 2016. Yes. None of this is on the American mind. Like, I, I don't, I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong because this is on three cable networks, but it's summertime. People are out doing <laughs> stuff. They, they walk, they're walking by, they're going, they, they don't care. I mean, this Jenna, yeah, what do you I think? think though, move on. I think Trump has made a point that within the FBI, there has been an effort by some of those people, by some some aspect of it, to undermine him. And many, many poo-pooed that and laughed at it and said it's a big joke. And now you see a guy who's coming out. I don't know what more information you would need to not only show his bias, but to show that there was intent here to do something about it. You don't say, if I write a text to Jesse and say, oh, Juan's doing, you know, a terrible job on the show, and Jesse says, well, he just got renewed, and I say, will stop it. That means we're going to try to stop you from getting renewed. That doesn't mean the American people are going to write letters in and try to make that well, happen. You know what happened. This was Very direct intent. But I would just say in my own defense that it's it's time for Sharknado. Yeah. And I think, I think lots of people would watch that show just like they were watching this silliness mm -hmm. today, you know? All right. well, also just Daryl Issa yeah. forcing him to reenact those yeah. texts. Oh, like, that's, I, I, that's oh, where no, they that went. was great television, Talk about though. jumping the shark. But, but, I mean, that's that's I where mean, they that's hurt the, themselves. But, right. Jedediah, that's the yeah. point. Like, but I this wasn't supposed to be great television. Yeah, it's a congressional hearing. Yeah. I agree with you, but I do think it drove the point home of how horrifically biased those things that yeah. he was saying was. And he, in one breath, is saying, I wasn't biased. And when he had to reiterate that yeah. stuff, everyone at home was like, uh, come on. And, and let's, re let's remember, he was removed from the Mueller probe for bias. The IG said he was biased. And he's being investigated still by the IG for bias. That's and a better Rosenstein point. And Rosenstein said he was biased. <laughs> and the IG okay. report said, biased. what, Jesse? Said he was that it biased. didn't affect his work. They said it couldn't prove it that it affected his affect work. Hard to prove, they said it couldn't on. prove it. Can we stop talking right. about it? Yeah. Let's go. They're breaking. <laughs> we're breaking. The hearing is in recess right now for the next 15. So we're going to come back live when they're back. All right. First, Trump shakes up NATO, defending his tough talk. The summit shockwaves up next. Omarut, Omarut.
to begin. We are the All right, like an orange tornado, Donald Trump swept into the NATO summit. The expectation, total destruction. But hasn't anyone noticed a pattern? Not the media who monitor Trump with an infant's temperament. It's always the end of the world. Yet, why do we always feel fine? Could it be because tremendous progress has been made? Tremendous progress has been made. Everyone's agreed to substantially up their commitment. They're going to up it at levels that they've never thought of before. Never. Never. So after all the noise, everything's calm again. And it seems like all Trump did was ask the other guys to pay their fair share. Fair share. Remember when the media loved that? <laughs> It's only right that we ask everyone to pay their fair share. It was important for us to make sure that millionaires and billionaires paid their fair share. Making sure the wealthiest Americans begin to pay their fair share. <laughs> but ask that of your allies, our media bristles. How dare us rubes ask our more sophisticated allies to chip in on the bill, especially in public. It, it's like when the dinner bill comes, it's always that know-it-all at the table who darts to the restroom, leaving you to be the jerk to call him on it because he knows you won't. But he never expected that Trump would be at the table, who would do it to his face because, frankly, he's our jerk. Germany spends only 1.24% of its GDP on NATO, which was created to curb Soviet expansion. Meanwhile, Germany's pipelining with Putin. Talk about Soviet expansion. Since America's always left with the bill, maybe we can call Germany out for hiding in the john, doing dirty deals when the check drops. Now Trump wants defense spending at 4% GDP, twice what these countries already failed to meet. Why would he do that? Maybe to get them to meet the initial target? Could he be a stable genius? I'm very consistent. I'm a very stable genius. <laughs> so after all the tantrums, can't the media admit that Trump had a point? Now Putin is next, which means everyone on CNN will don their chicken suits and scream at the sky, telling us it's the end of the world, but only as they know it. Jed, uh, another apocalypse averted, it oh, seems. Oh, yes. A disaster. <laughs> I don't understand the outrage over this. I, I really don't. I don't understand why, if there's a, a country that's an ally of ours that isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing, and we're all supposed to be helping each other out, and they're not pulling their weight in a certain area, I get you have to be a little bit cautious with the language that you use, maybe, and the way you approach it. You don't want to jeopardize those relationships. But he's the president of the United States. He is supposed to put America first. He is supposed to say, hey, guys, look, we're all supposed to be helping each other other out and if you're not giving the percentage that you're supposed to be giving toward this spending and we are you, you need to up it that's yeah. his job he's that's like what he's, supposed he's like to the do. guy at the restaurant when the bill comes he itemizes the bill <laughs> he's like well no i you had steak <laughs> exactly. i only had an appetizer <laughs> exactly. and i didn't up. drink so and that's <laughs> funny though but you know i don't the media loved when obama went on the apology tour and and they hate this i mean this is just he wants to strengthen nato and make sure everybody has skin in the game i don't i don't see i don't see why they have a problem with it at all. Okay. Let me ask one. Is this that stereotype realized where you have the snooty Europeans and the ugly American who comes over? He talks and about money. And talks about money and jingles change <laughs> in his pants. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know no, what I mean? No, no, I mean, Well, look, we have a stable genius. Yes. And the, sta <laughs> and the stable genius on our team goes over there. And the context is what's missing, I think, from Jesse's analysis because 97 to 2 is what the Senate voted just this week to say we like NATO. Right. The American public is like 69 percent. NATO helps us in terms of international security. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We have here in a situation where the president comes out and says, oh, I have persuaded all these NATO allies now to up their spending. Emmanuel Macron comes out and says, uh, no, we just said we would hold to our existing promise. Uh, which is it's just, just, just the French. Luster. It's, it's just, just the luster. French. He, he, and they're lousy tippers, the French. They, they are. <laughs> all he's saying, he, 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 he likes NATO. He just thinks he can get a better price yeah. for it. You know, Dana, isn't that the, the key? I mean, maybe I'm wrong. This is only my sp my speculation is that to get them to get to the 2%. He's, well, yeah, he's, well, I mean, it's like, a, you, I mean, it's the art of the deal. Like, the you art of the deal. And you know you're going to yeah, compromise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think what he is saying also is that um, if you think that you have a problem with Russia, and I agree with you. Yes. If he does, we'll see. Right. But, like, you have a problem, then you should p put more towards your defense. The thing, though, that has bothered me about this, it's not like there's a big NATO pie. Mm. The, the, the percentages are but what you spend on your own defense for your country. So it's like, that's why they're a little bit different. 
the Estonia's GDP, yeah. if you get two percent of Estonia's GDP, like really much. We, we, we just made that in an hour in the right. United States. Mm -hmm. So it's all like leading up to it. I think on the Putin thing, what's very interesting, and I would watch for it, is uh, you had Netanyahu go to Putin the other day and say. I want you to make a deal with us to de let us deal with Syria and take you out of the picture and let us have Iran. Isn't, the, isn't that pipeline thing a little squirrely? The whole thing? It's Schroeder's behind it, isn't he? Yeah, yeah so, so they have this pipeline. should have gone through Ukraine. Instead, it goes right through the sea, right to Russia, and it well, should have gone that, through Ukraine. But the, part of the reason the Ukrainians didn't want it is they didn't want the Russians to, have to, to get to put their pipeline through but Ukraine. But you get transmission fees when it goes well, let me just Ukraine. tell you, and also that deal was struck in 2000, way right. before all the trouble. So you have a different context, Jesse. I agree. Mm. They should buy it from us. Exactly. Ukraine, I crane. We all crane. By the way, <laughs> do you really want Germany to have a strong military? Again? Oh, one. Fair point. Going deep. The explosive <laughs> bombshell that has liberals foaming at the mouth over President Trump's Supreme Court nominee. That's next. This is so fun. If you thought the left's attacks against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh were already bad, wait until you hear these ridiculous attempts at a smear campaign. In a Washington Post article headline, The Elite World of Brett Kavanaugh, we learn, quote, in Kavanaugh's Georgetown prep yearbook, he listed himself as the treasurer of the Keg City Club. 100 kegs or bust. Another post headline reveals Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh piled up credit card debt by purchasing Nationals tickets, White House says. And pro-choice group NARAL tweeting, well, we'll be damned if we're going to let five men, including some frat boy named Brett, strip us of our hard-won bodily autonomy and reproductive rights. Hashtag stop Kavanaugh. Hashtag save Roe. Stephen Colbert also doing some mudslinging. I don't know much about Kavanaugh, but I'm skeptical uh, because his name is Brett. <laughs> that sounds less like a Supreme Court justice and more like a waiter at Ruby Tuesdays. Jesse, this is all they have? I guess so. I mean, it sounds like he's likable. He likes baseball and likes to drink. And also, <laughs> and Juan, you know, you got to like a guy that went into a little bit of credit card debt to get Nationals tickets. I mean, that's worth it. Uh, Mrs. Williams, you didn't hear that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm a big Nationals fan, and I have season tickets. So and he's I, been a I, government employee for his, almost his entire adult career. Of course, he lives in a much better neighborhood than I do. I mean, he lives in a great neighborhood, but... So what? I mean, you know what? But I think this is just so much fun. I mean, they're just at this point just having fun because the real thing is, can the Democrats stop them? Can they stop the hearings or at least delay them? And that's the real argument that's going on. So all this is like frivolity at this point. And by the way, the Nationals this year are not worth the money. <laughs> One, why do Democrats do this stuff, though? This reminded me of Mitt Romney when he was running, and they were running those articles about how Mitt Romney bullied a kid in prep school. And it seems like Democrats do this often when there's not to, you know talk about this guy's record Kavanaugh I have I take issue with one of the tax related cases Mark Levin was talking about the other night how he argued that the, the mandate for the Affordable Care Act was a tax and not a penalty talk about that take issue with that why do they go into this nonsense that depletes the whole argument and makes people say you guys are just swimming looking for something oh I think they will go into it I think at this moment that's just where we are Jedediah I mean it's like you know, yesterday there were these wonderful pictures of him with his family when he announced, uh, when he was, the nomination was announced and he spoke at the East, in the East Room of the White House. And then there were articles about what does it mean when men show off their women as part of their resume, the two daughters and the wonderful wife. And I thought, this is ridiculous. Leave the guy alone. Yeah. But you know what? They are going to talk about the record. It's not only the tax records, it's surveillance for uh, people. Uh, who are commercial break talk. Commercial break talk. <laughs> Right. Greg, what do you think? Um, this, is this uh, good for Brett Kavanaugh that he's well, yes, I mean, just a normal guy? Beer kegs, baseball, and debt. You can't get more, <laughs> you can't get more American than that, man. You, this is a new era with, where you're going to get younger nominees who are from a generation where they used 
party as a verb and not a noun. Yeah. And I'm older than this guy, and I'm older than the previous guy, and my yeah, hobbies were not this benign. Wait, you're older than the Supreme Court. Oh, I'm Justice older than two of them. So we're going to be in an era. Wow. Think about 10 years from now, 20 years, where social, the, the permanence of social media, everyone's going to have a paper trail. The Supreme Court's going to show up. They're going to have sorority yeah, pictures. Like, what did you mean when you <laughs> tweeted? Exactly. Yeah. We're all, I mean, uh, it's, it's, say, it's, I, I don't remember <laughs> tweeting that, but the this was the context. would have been. How much are those tickets? <laughs> That's a lot. I mean, that's a lot. Well, well, remember, he's been a government it. employee for um, 20 years. But, but it's, uh, you got baseball, you got debt, you got beer. I bet he, if they find out he runs an apple pie smuggling ring, <laughs> that'll be amazing. No, no, no. So he's, he goes to a great Catholic church attended by more of the Washington elite, mm -hmm. and he hangs out at a burger. Oh, my room. God. <laughs> what, what, what is wrong with and this? he was serving <laughs> homeless people hot meals the other day at a yeah. soup kitchen. It's they were like, too hot. It's almost it's like <laughs> they we, burned the homeless burn guy's tongue. <laughs> It's like Weekend at Kavanaugh's Supreme Court edition. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're waiting for Peter Strzok's hearing to resume on Capitol Hill. We'll bring it to you live when they're back. But first, facial recognition is a hot new craze, but there's more than meets the eye. Uh -oh. But you should know before <laughs> opting in. Uh -huh. Welcome back to The Five. You're going to see more of the wild and hairy congressional hearings, Peter Strzok <laughs> hearings, resume any minute. But before then, we'll give you some entertainment. We will bring it to you live when it does resume, though. In the meantime, you might think that the new facial recognition tools are cool, but they could come at a big cost, a surveillance state. The new technology can apparently land you in trouble for anything from jaywalking to traffic violations and far more. Social media companies like Facebook use it to help tag users in photos, but consumer groups and advocates say it may violate your privacy because it names people without their consent. Jedediah, uh, there was a front page piece in the New York Times this week talking about how the Chinese government is using this kind of technology to spy on people in public places doing ordinary things does this upset you? Very scary, and this is why I wrote, I'm about to pull a Greg Guffel, this is why I wrote the book, Hashtag Do Not Disturb, how Ooh. I ghosted my cell phone to take back my life. I actually wrote a, a lot of this. When does it come out? It's out it? October 9th, by the okay. way. The pre-order is available now. Go buy it. But I, I, I wrote this because this stuff with facial recognition, with fingerprinting, is getting really, really scary because A, this stuff could be hacked. B, you never know if a third party is going to acquire the data and what they're going to do with it. And oftentimes, you don't even realize that you are having these photos taken of you or you are part of this system because you have to opt out. It's not that you have to give your consent to opt in. You have to know that they're automatically scanning my face. I'm automatically part of this, and I have to go search and figure out how to opt out of this feature. People don't know that. They assume that if they haven't signed up for something like this, they're not participating. So, Jesse, wait, can I just I'm point sorry, out a problem with sure. facial recognition? What if you look a lot like someone? Yeah. Suddenly, I'll be able to access Brad Pitt's, you know, uh, bank, <laughs> bank accounts. I mean, that's going to be a huge problem. Yeah, for yeah, Brad Pitt. I'm, I'm going to get David. You. I'm going to get hit with fines for David Schwimmer <laughs> running red lights. Yeah. But here's a, here's what really uh, surprised me about this. They can go into a supermarket. So yeah. Jesse is in the supermarket and he's buying soup, and they can say, "Hey, that's Never Jesse happened. Waters, <laughs> not." Not your, your Doppler. That's Jesse Waters. <laughs> he likes Campbell's soup, and if you give him a discount right now, Jesse will buy more. You think, why are they doing this? Why are they using this technology? Well, they're doing that to make money, Juan. It's like whenever you but Google it's not something, fair to Jesse, and is then it? two minutes later, there's an ad that pops up. Yes. Oh, exactly what you were looking for. That is for. so embarrassing. I, I don't know. <laughs> What? Especially at work. <laughs> what were you looking for, Greg? Exactly. Keep, keep, keep popping up over there. Yeah. Um, listen, I, I like it for terrorism. Like I could see putting them in airports or at train stations or in Times Square, but you can only use it to fight terrorism. I don't like it when you can get hit for jaywalking or for running a red light. I like the cat and mouse with police. You know, it, like they should be able to catch you running the red light personally. They shouldn't be able to use red light cameras. That's just not fair. Did this happen to you recently? Really? I'm getting a lot of red light camera tickets. So, Dana, uh, six years ago, the Europeans asked them to stop this. Don't right. do it. 
Uh, and what we've seen is, especially after Zuckerberg testified earlier in the year, declining confidence in Facebook and the American public yeah. because of things like this. Well, I think you know, the New York Times story about China really uh, um, affected me because in some ways you think it, it's convenient. Um, a friend of mine, I talked to her last night, she lives in Abu Dhabi. She's an American there. Um, her husband's in the mil our military. And she got in a car accident. And they, uh, she called the police and they said, oh, right, are you in the white Acura? We're seeing it now. <laughs> wow. okay, so the, the, the cameras are everywhere. But what is happening in China is even worse. So they'll find out, like, you're walking down the street and like, oh, that guy right there, and they'll put your face up on a bulletin board, big debts. Yeah. Right? And, try to, like, and publicly shaming people. Wow. So it's a way to control. Was that Kavanaugh they caught over yeah. there? Hey, hey, that's the liberal <laughs> joke. That's the liberal joke. So in some, I think that the allure of a lot of this, it, it adds to convenience, it helps you get things done, but then the danger is when it tips over onto the other side. All right, I, so can I just make one point? Uh, real quick, Privac guys, privacy is that, overrated. Then. I think we should just let everybody know everything. You know, before you get exposed, Expose Put yourself. yourself. <laughs> wow. Okay. So Peter Strzok yourself. just sat back down at the congressional hearings. We're going to take you back to that live. <laughs> I had to get that. Fox News alert. We're going to take you back to that hearing. Here's Peter Strzok. And in the summer of 2016, were you working as a speechwriter? No. So would you have happened to have written the speech for Donald Trump, the candidate, in the summer of 2016, where he told an audience, Russia, if you're listening, and then went on to tell the Russians that if they hacked Hillary Clinton's emails, they'd be rewarded? Did you write that speech? I did not. Does any of the behavior that I just described concern you from a counterintelligence perspective? Tremendously. Why? Because it indicates a a set of standards and requests that, in my mind, one, encourage a foreign power to begin inserting themselves into our electoral process. Uh, it indicate a willingness or a desire to engage in a conversation and dialogue about how to do that. Uh, it potentially implicates a variety of laws. Uh, and without getting into what has or has not been done investigatively, uh, simply I, I'm expressing that based on the open source reporting about those things. Thank you. Yield back. The chair recognizes the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Meadows, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Truck, I'm going to go through a few real quick questions, but I think earlier in your testimony today, I want to make sure I have this clear. Uh, I think you were quoted as saying, we don't ever talk about ongoing investigations outside of the FBI. Is that true? I don't know the context in which I said it. I can think of I think examples. We were talking sir, about sharing with uh, the media. And oh, right. No, you don't. You, so, in my experience, me. that is, I can think of examples, not that I've participated in, where members, if there was an ongoing case, say, and a field office wanted to enlist the public's help, and they would talk to the media about getting a lead on a kidnapper. So, I, there are times where that might occur. So, that's why I want to be careful to frame what I said and, and how so I said you, it. So, you have never talk to anyone outside of the FBI about uh, the Russia investigation at all? I have never spoken to any member of the media about the Russia investigation. Have you spoken to anyone who is not in the media and is not part of the Department of Justice or the FBI about the Russia investigation, uh, the US, other than witnesses? The U.S. intelligence community. All right, so you've talked to the CIA. Well, I, the U.S. intelligence community. I, I would not well, limit would that it to in, that. And would I'm that include gonna, the CIA? Uh, potentially. I don't think I can answer the specifics of who I talked to without getting well, into Well, so I'm going to I'm going to ask questions that you can't answer that are not specifics about this investigation. And so, in doing so, I need you to to give me clear answers. Are you aware that there was a meeting between Director Brennan? and Senator Harry Reid, where indeed he shared certain intelligence with Senator Reid uh, on August the 25th of 2016. Are you aware of that? I, not to my recollection, I am not. Okay, well then, the text message between you and Ms. Page a few days after that on August 30th, where you said, here it comes, when Senator Reid sent a letter to Director Comey, what would you have been referring to then? Uh, my recollection of that, which is very imprecise, that was that Senator Reid had been making a lot of comment, and I don't know if it was public comment or comment to Director Comey. Well, they there weren't public at that time. Sure they became public with the want... New York Times, but they weren't public at that time. So are you aware
aware that in your email dated January 10th, where you acknowledged the fact that Harry Reid knew about the dossier uh, prior to sending that letter, uh, are you aware of that email? From you. I don't know that I was talking in that about the, the, uh, the, the steel material in which you're referring to as the dossier. I would have to check my notes. I, I'm not... Well, I need you to check your notes and report back because we have evidence that would suggest that. So since we're talking about... Well, the date not, on this, sir, was what? August of... Uh, August 25th was the briefing with Harry Reid. Of 2016? By of 2016 by Director Brennan. He sends a letter then to Director Comey, which we have acknowledgement of by Director Comey and by you and Lisa Page in, in text messages that would suggest that you were aware of that. So the CIA director briefing Harry Reid, and it, the in, indication is, is that they talked about the dossier, and we get that indication from an email from you from January 10th. Yeah, but that's not true. Uh, Congressman, the first recollection I have of any material from uh, the, the material produced by Mr. Steele was mid-September of 2016. So I, I did not know or have information uh, from of that material, certainly from any other source prior to mid-September. Uh, if you, if you, memory serves. I, you had not seen it until mid-September. My recollection is that in mid-September, and again, I, I have to defer. But to I want to I want to give you a that. chance to make sure that we're clear on the record here. You are not aware of a briefing that took place between Director Brennan and and Senator Harry Reid on August 25th. That is correct. My recollection, I was not aware of that meeting. All right. So let me go a little bit further because we've got four or five other documents that would indicate that the White House was notified at least four different times about this investigation. Do you think that that would be appropriate during an ongoing campaign that the Obama administration would be kept up to speed on a Russia collusion investigation? Do you think that would be appropriate? Sir, you're, you're mixing a couple of things. It, the, it would be entirely appropriate for the White House to be aware and concerned about what the government of Russia was doing with regard to the elections. When that, it comes that, to that the was not my, that was not my to, question, but if, I, I, if, I, I agree. I'm concerned. I actually have a bill that I, I encourage my colleagues opposite to talk about Russian interference mm -hmm. where we can make sure that didn't happen. We're talking about an investigation that would include collusion being talked about with the White House. We have evidence that would suggest not once, not twice, not three times, but four times that it was discussed with people in the Obama administration. Were you aware of any discussion that of, took place with regards to the Russia, Russia collusion investigation that took place with the Obama administration's executive branch? So when I, I want to ask you, sir, when you say investigations, are you talking about investigations? I'm not saying there were or were not investigations of U.S. persons or potentially investigations of a Russian sitting in the Ukraine. Of U.S. persons associating with Donald Trump's campaign. I, I am not aware of any briefings to the White House about those. It, it, when was the time frame you provided? I, I'm not any, aware of any briefings any to the White House. Any time between July 31st and November 8th when the election happened. You're not aware of any. That's your sworn testimony. My sworn about specific identities of people who were there? I, no, I no, no. I wasn't asking about the people. I don't want to know the people. Right. I want to know, did it happen? Are you aware of any conversations that happened with Obama administration officials? And I, be careful how you answer. I, I am certainly aware of conversations that occurred with Obama administration officials. I'm aware of a variety of conversations that took place across the U.S. intelligence community talking about the Russian efforts. I am aware that my recollection and understanding, again, I was not present at any briefing, my understanding is that there were not discussions of in identities of individual U.S. persons who may or may not have been the subject of, uh, of investigation. Okay, I think you're parsing words. Mr. We'll, Mr. Oh, sir, I'll go back. You're I'll asking me to parse words. Time you, of the if gentleman you want has a specific expired. answer to be careful, then I would, you, the only way I can do that is by parsing. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Richmond, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and against the, the wisdom of my grandmother that said that when you see a circus going on, don't jump in the middle of it and expect people not to call you a clown, I will answer, ask questions anyway, because I think that this is a circus. And the problem is that it's a distraction from real issues that we're talking about or should be talking about in this country. We've asked this committee to have a hearing on the fact that we still have not renewed the Voting Rights Act. We have had no hearing. We've asked this committee to have a hearing on DACA, where 
We are putting at risk dreamers who make this country a better place. But we've had no hearing on DACA. We've asked for hearings on the fact that we are separating infants and toddlers from their parents with now clearly no ability to reunite the family. So we have sick and maniacal things going on in this country, and we spent six hours with 20% of Congress locked in a room bashing someone in hopes that we can discredit a law enforcement investigation. In my wildest dreams, in my entire life, I never thought that I, a young black man, would be defending the FBI. But we were always taught that we have to believe in the system, that the people who take an oath and swear to protect, people who protect and serve our communities, people who have fought for this country on foreign land, that we give them the benefit of the doubt of their honesty and their integrity and the fact that they want to see justice served. We have these hearings, but we won't have hearings to really look at Russian collusion. We can't even get the administration to admit that Russians played a part in hacking our election. So when we look at what we're doing today, what we're doing is wasting precious time. And I can go down the list on September 7th. We sent a, September 7th of 2017, we sent a letter about DACA. On October 2nd of 2017, we sent a letter to this committee asking to have a hearing about the Las Vegas shooting and what we could be doing as the Judiciary Committee to make sure that that doesn't happen again. We sent a letter November 6th of 2017 to ask about what we could be doing when 25 people were killed in a church in Texas. We, the Judiciary Committee with jurisdiction, why are we not having a hearing on that? So the question is, with all of the talent on this committee, on both sides, my Republican colleagues, my Democratic, we have spent far too much time today on a red herring that is designed to do exactly what I'm afraid it's doing, which is distracting from the real issues that we're dealing with in this country.